Thomas e. has very generously uh, noted that he can answer questions in Inuktitut English and French for us today, so that's pretty incredible. And it's, uh, I'll, I'll just start with the briefest introduction. I'm Dr. Heather Gliliukti. I'm the director of the Inuit Futures Project, um, which has been hosting these workshops kind of informally over the last month or so, and will continue to do so for at least another month to come. And today we're really thrilled to get to work with um, Thomas C. Mangyuk, who's done this amazing video on graphic design and logo design for us, which is, uh, as someone commented on the Facebook, like, I didn't think you could learn everything you need to know about logo design in 12 minutes, but there you go. <laughs> so uh, if you haven't seen the video yet, the, the link is in the chat bar. It's on our website, inuitfutures.ca. And uh, I'll just give the briefest of introductions, then we'll let Thomas C. Uh, do the work, do the Q&A section for us. Um, essentially, he is a uh, graphic designer, a, a well-known logo designer, many projects in Canada, has designed books, uh, a game that we eagerly, eagerly await going into production, Nonami, I purchased a couple of sets myself, and uh, is also a um, principal? Principal, right? No, center director. Uh, a colleague to the principal. We have different responses yes. <laughs> in his community and a father of girls. So we're going to let Thomas e. take it away uh, with some Q&A and I'll ask the first question and then I invite you all to um, jump in. But the first question I think is, can you tell us a little bit about how you got started in this? A very good question. Um, well, leaving a week, uh, growing up in a oh, what was really possible. I didn't know what I could do because in the community I saw my mother being an um, interpreter at the clinic. We had cops, we had servers at the municipality at the, at the store. There were not too many. I didn't know what to do. I was interested in uh, developing or playing video games. I, I love playing video games. So I thought, okay, programmer, uh, math, and um, I went to CIGEP in Montreal. Um, the program I want to take was not available anymore where I was going at story, but they still offered uh, graphic design. So I took that because I, I like drawing. I thought, okay, why not have fun? And having fun ended up being work. Um, so from that, I just started continue developing, making stuff. Um, and here I am, I make stuff. Did everybody catch all that? Sometimes it was cutting out just a little bit or a little bit slow, but it's mostly pretty good. I think that the more still you are, the better the sound comes through. I could be wrong, but that's great. Okay, so who's got questions for Thomasy? How long have you been doing this? Oh, um, I graduated 2006. So when we opened our campus, uh, we were offering graphic design, web development, and computer support. And I offered services that were uh, asked of, of me. So uh, it was off graphic design because people in the region needed uh, some design made by someone local, someone regional, mm. the, the identity that I uh, deal with. So since 2006, this is what I have been doing. Uh, 2008 was a little difficult when, they, when we had, um, how is it called, the money wasn't going well in Canada. And then after, the, after that, um, I continued, but uh, got tired of uh, working so hard with limited resources. So I took a position here since it was available and I enjoyed, but continued doing graphic design even 2020. I'm going to give people a moment to jump in. If they have a question, they can also write it in the chat bar and I will ask it. Um, I got to say, the video that you uploaded was um, so clear and so informative. I, uh, I really enjoyed your, your crappy version <laughs> of your logo. I think that it's very clear how branding works and how important that is. Um, have you ever had a, a like a logo disaster? Have you ever done something that really didn't work? 
I do. There's one that I will not mention. It is being used at the moment. Um, <laughs> what happens that um, sometimes funding is uh, scarce. It's some organizations where people don't have a lot of money to invest on their image. So I end up not uh, having the time to continue developing it. Um, as, is, as I mentioned in the video, uh, you might have, you might remember saying that it could take up to a month to create a logo. And this is my usual time frame um, because I, I start making things and then, um, it, it, it keeps on improving. And then uh, through the, through the process we see where uh, what doesn't work and what works and we keep on developing it along with the client with the feedback of the client because they they have to tell me how it feels for them uh, there's a lot of emotion to it also so i need uh, their perspective their, their feeling and then uh one one point in time i had a contract we we didn't finish it and uh, i i still had sketches that i i liked that I, I wanted to develop further. And when there was, one, when there was an opportunity uh, in our region, there was a, um, a logo contest. They, they were willing to pay $500 for a logo or sketch something. So I just took what I had and sent it to them. And they took it and did not um, develop it further. Mm. So it doesn't look good. It, it, uh, it's, it's thin lines. It's hard to recognize from far. It's like my drawing, my crappy uh, logo in the video it, it reminds me of that oh. <laughs> oh really cool concept it's being used I, I love the concept but fully executed it's like uh when a painting is already hanging in a museum and you want to go in with a paintbrush and just touch it up a little bit <laughs> like, exactly <laughs> just make it a little bit a little bit better <laughs> um and what are some logos that you're really proud of uh, very good question. Um, I suppose the Damani logo, uh, we have internet service provider. Uh, they gave me uh, full support. So I was in constant communication with the person uh, who, uh, from Damani, and uh, he worked for a graphic design company before, so we got along very well. And the meaning, um, what I did with that, if you look at the, uh, the logo that I reproduce in the video, so it is from the same organization. Uh, they had a, their previous logo and I, they, they wanted to update it, modernized and easy to use at any setting. So the, the previous logo had an igloo and uh, the, the wireless signal. So I, I merged those. When you look at it, the uh, uh, circular shape, bring like, so reminding us of the uh, igloo shape. And the signals, the wireless the signals, so that the the squares inside, the snow blocks are 14, like uh, for 14 communities in Nunavik, because they offer services in Nunavik only. So I'm really proud of that. Um, I love the Nunavik Parks logo also, and the this one, the the proposed logo for Nunavik, a region. <laughs> uh, there's a explanation on uh, YouTube. If you look for none of it, like, and a few more of this. That's awesome. So that's a proposed logo for Nunavik. Yep. A, f a few years ago, when we ha when we really start being serious about uh, having our own government, and we when we start taking steps, I decided, why don't I create a logo and propose it so that uh, when we work towards a goal, we have a reminder. Something that unites our thoughts, our goals. So when we see, we say, okay, this, um, everything we're working for is um, represented by this image. So I created that logo. Awesome. Um, anybody else have any questions for Thomasy? I have more. <laughs> Jason? I can <laughs> Yeah, I'm just wondering, do you uh, work solely with uh, clients in the north or have you gotten contracts from the south as well? Good question. 
Well, I gave contracts to uh, people in the South. Uh, actually, in Chile, I saw there was somebody from Chile. I had three contractors when uh, I started working on a, a cartoon that I, I put on the side. I hope to finish it uh, soon in the future. But uh, uh, in contract from the South, I have not. My focus has been regional. Um, because I, as I said earlier, our resources are a bit limited up here. So my focus was just in Nunavik mainly, and then a little bit in Nunavik. What is the big challenge you find working from home or in the north? Our biggest challenge is um, I, on my on my for myself is I have some skills that I do not have. I, I, I really wish that I could be good at um, managing finance, uh, being good at uh, tax and stuff. <laughs> that, I'm, I'm terrible at that. So I, I had to work with other people and there was nobody in my community who specialized in that. So it's quite difficult. That's one thing. And also finding inspiration. For example, when I go to Montreal, it's a, perhaps 2,000 kilometers from where I am um, of inspiration. I go to a museum or an art gallery or other places. There's a lot of inspiration over here. Uh, my inspiration nature, I go out, it's, but um, there's no real places that could really give me that inspiration. And unless, uh, unfortunately though, since recently, there is a have to bring some artwork. Um, sometimes I go to the store uh, to see if I can buy uh, carvings or go look at carvings because they're amazing and they get that sense of uh, creation. Um, but yeah, it's limited resources. Is there anywhere in your community uh, where you can go and see art on a regular basis? Like new, I, new work? from uh, my mother, <laughs> from uh, some community members, but uh, we don't have a gallery, a museum, and like that. So the only places were uh, the first few. Uh, a friend who uh, who did some work with uh, the community members, so them, great source of uh, inspiration also, but. Um, What advice do you have for um, Inuit who may be artists and are interested in getting into graphic design? Well, graphic design, um, what I would recommend is to look at packaging and, and see if they can make their own version. If somebody had written me to try to reproduce things, for example, I can go to the store and look at the uh, packaging of cookies and see if I can make a version, for example. Even if I just copy uh, the existing minuted you know, it's, it's already there's already a process to go to that point. So I recommend start with copying and through copying learn and then once you're able to reproduce things, make your own version, make something completely different. You learn a lot about, um, just by doing that process, you'd learn a lot about how colors work together and what makes for an attractive design and how to sort of, uh, like you explained in your video, how to block things on packaging and other things. That's, that's great advice. Anything else? Um, fortunately, uh, our internet connection isn't so bad anymore. So there's tutorials, even if they're in English or other languages, they're worth watching. <laughs> I mean, the thing is that we're fortunate in a way that uh, a lot of money has already been spent to create uh, amazing things. Uh, I'll go back to the packaging. The hundreds of thousands of dollars have been spent creating the, those designs. And so we're, anyone who's interested in graphic design has already access to that are effective, things that work. So learn um, to reproduce, study them, see what works to work, and then 
also resources online. So those are recommendations. So um, Subin might be asking you a question in the chat window, but in the meantime, I'm wondering about the business side of being a graphic designer. What are some things that you've learned about being your own small business? Oh, a few things. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's, um, I suppose, it is everywhere. Uh, artist, uh, graphic designer, anyone who produces, um, there, there's challenges. Unfortunately, we have to produce a lot in order to make uh, a, a living. So I expect that and find, I recommend people to look for uh, ways to be able to uh, reach a large number of people with uh, the least amount of work. A good example would be uh, creating an illustri il illustration book or a uh, book with drawings, artwork, because it reaches many people. When we focus on creating work per person, one work for a few people, the return is not a lot. So that, that's something to think about if we want to depend on ourselves in, to make a living. Um, we have to think of making as much as m money we can uh, by reaching many people. So that's what I'm trying to do with Nunami. So it, it uh, supports my, my, my company, myself, so I can create more. Can you tell us a little bit about Nunami? Actually, I'm not sure that everyone uh, on the on the call has heard of it before, and it's really cool. Okay, so Nunami, uh, we love board games. Uh, I grew up watching my my aunt and her friends playing the um, I don't know how it's called in English, the Chinese uh, checkers or something like that. Um, I, I can hear it anyway. So we, we as we play board games, as we buy them. We, we haven't found anything that we really relate to. And often they were about, uh, I'm going to try, try to win and take everything all for me and whatnot. So I thought uh, I should create something that is reflective of my values, of our culture. So as I was out, um, I came up with a, a gameplay, a play that requires people together. Um, so, my goal with Nunami is to give us the exploration. Every time you play, I want you to feel that you're in a new place. So there's pieces, uh, board pieces that go together the way, any way you want to, or randomly. You put in the, some parts that you're going to turn, and each card um, is a character, a, a type of character. And then as you put cards, you create small communities. And then these communities, they can either survive or, or not. If you become too greedy, all about you, there's starvation. So um, that is, uh, the gameplay is founded in, in, in my values. And um, I, through the, through, as I created it, I included uh, my mother and my daughter. So it's a three generation game. And I wanted to make sure that uh, it was only not for myself. So it includes the generation before me and the generation after me. So I want to make sure that it was an Inuit game, not a Tumasi game. And uh, we, we, have, we have fun playing it. If you have questions, I'm happy to answer. <laughs> Is there, so how do you win the game, if that's the case? <laughs> so how do you win the game? is if, um, if you're playing two player or four player, you win the game by having higher influence. So each character has strength and has um, um, life points. So the strength point and the life point. So the game encourages um, uh, thinking in probabilities. Um, simply put, it, 
in the region, so in one board, because there's many boards uh, during gameplay, if you have if, if, if the region, uh, the board, the majority of your characters, you get one. And if the number in your favor, uh, you get another point. One character uh, makes points if uh, the addition of numbers is below zero, but the other player gets a point if the numbers are. So it's a game with numbers. So you, Um, Jason is asking, is it a role-playing game? In it, I recommend <laughs> you watch the uh, YouTube uh, video. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, it, it, it's not, uh, really role, not really a role-playing game. Um, uh, I think it looks a little bit like uh, Settlers of Catan or something, maybe, where you have to kind of join the, the pieces together in ways that are advantageous to... The different environments but we don't need to get into it that's just my guess from <laughs> watching the videos um so suben has a uh suben from who's joining us from india has a question that's very design focused uh okay. how far is the use of the golden ratio in your work and do you have an example of that if you think of it yes um i don't use it normally <laughs> um because <laughs> Naturally, we go with our senses, and our sense goes to um, what we find beautiful is on mathematical uh, at the end. Uh, so naturally, it goes towards that. But the golden ratio, I don't use it normally. Although a project that I I was hoping to share, um, but. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll give you um, one, one design, an example. I'll, I'll, I'll find it and I'll share with you because I used it on one design. Is it okay? Yeah, you should be able to share so your screen. Yeah, hold on, find it. Hold on. So, I'll privilege here because I haven't shared this. It's, it's an ongoing project. Um, oh. Again. I feel, okay, share screen. All right. Do you, you see this logo? Yeah. Okay, so I'm a big fan of understanding, which is why in uh, education, so in Inotitu, Sukuyena means science. Um, or looking everywhere until we get a proper understanding. So this logo for my project, uh, because I'm planning to promote science in our region, is the ratio. Hold on, I'll, I'll, I'll go to it. If you see this, on the right side, the square, the black square, the green line, the, so the width green line, the red, um, see the ratio there. So I on that, the, the pi uh, for, for the length of, of, of the circle, uh, I use the earth and moon ratio. I think um, if I'm correct, if I'm, the moon is for instance, mass of the, I, I use the three and five states, so solid, um, liquid, um, gas, also uh, the, 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 anyway, so I use these to make this logo be over here to explain a bit better. So yeah, 27% the size of the earth the moons. So I want these uh, to make this logo. So the golden ratio, I use it only for logo I had uh, um, created specifically for science. So don't steal this. I'm <laughs> <gonna use> that. <laughs> 
Uh, I'm very impressed by what you just scrolled through quickly, which looked like um, like a table of contents explaining your design. Is that correct? It, it, explaining my design. Um, through that part, I'm planning to um, ask uh, some people in uh, Nunavik to create activities that promote understanding, to promote science. So that um document is a few pages long yeah no, multiple pages long explaining the logo but also the project and the tasks that i expect from people does anyone else have questions for thomasy before we end the call we're coming up on the Half an hour mark now. We've got a few more comments down here. Okay, so Visho said that's called the Logo Bible. Is that right? <laughs> I, I have never heard of the Logo Bible, and I will be afraid to um, make uh, some people uncomfortable by using the word Bible. That's fair. <laughs> Um, Jason said that's amazing and I saw Ella going wow <laughs> when you were showing it. Very, very impressive. But do you do that kind of a full deck for every logo where you talk about all the different elements or how do you normally do it? Sometimes uh, what I do is that um, when an organization has enough funding to let me work on such a thing, I do it. I, I uh, a booklet either in PDF or uh, uh, in print. And, I give I give it to the organization, but this one is a a project that that's very close to me. So I think for me and for others, I, I want to make sure that people understand the importance of that project. So I... um, you mentioned earlier occasionally submitting designs to design contests. What are some things to consider if anyone is considering? What are some things they should keep in mind if they're considering applying to a logo contest? What do you mean logo contest? When well, you said like, like an open, like an open competition, like an open call like that, because you said earlier you did one and they just went with the logo that you submitted, so you never had a chance to revise it. Are there other things that people should think about when they submit something to kind of an open call? Yeah. Well, I hope that, uh, first of all, people who are asking for a logo, people who are going to um, take a logo, they have to be aware that John is, should not be the final version. There should be multiple versions. And then also the person who is submitting the logo should expect to, to make multiple changes. It is okay. Uh, what we give out is not necessarily the, the, the only form. Sometimes we go out to make, uh, that's something we may, if it's hard to get attached from that, we should be comfortable to uh, just to be attached to the, to some details. Um, why are we attached? Is it because of certain, uh, the message that it's trying to send? Is it some contents in the, in the logo, in the design that we can re, uh, uh, recreate so that, uh, it, it, does, it, it doesn't just go away. If, uh, if I make a, a bird or um, um, another object, we have to be comfortable to have anyone, it, someone else or even ourselves to represent it, but another way. So we, we have to have this, this mentality at both ends, the creator and the receiver. Does anyone else have a question for Tom CEO? I see Glenn's hand up. Yes, Glenn, go for it. Um, uh, first of all, I, I just want to uh, more of a current comment that leads into a question. But um, I, I love uh, in your logo design how there's often a mixture of really organic forms that are often based on animals um, along with sort of geometrics. And I guess for uh, for you, uh, what are your inspirations or who are the artists who maybe influence you in your own design making? Oh, thank you. And by the way, part of, part of it is because I didn't realize that you had done the, uh, the Nunavik Parks logo, which I absolutely love. And when I was up in uh, 
at Kangsu Yuak, I got a little pin from the Pingalui Park, and I love it so much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. I, I also made a Pingalui uh, Park uh, logo because they each park got their new logo. logo. Uh, so I'm, I'm yeah. happy uh, that you enjoy them. So my inspiration is, as I said, as I said earlier, um, I often uh, the in the tundra things are very smooth, and uh, or when we see the, the rocks, uh, there there's a, a a geometry that I just focus on because there's nothing else. Um, or when we create something, they have to be solid; they they break. So um, I'll use uh, it look or igloo as an example, the squares, uh, the, the rectangles, the, the half shape, the ulu, which mm. half circle, um, or the, uh, the, the harpoon, the, the triangles, they're, they're hard to miss. So the, they're a source in, source in inspiration for me. The piles, I'm really back to remember names, even when it comes to uh, uh, actors, and so I just love their work. Um, same thing with some inmate uh, artists, but th there's some very good inspirations, uh, even locally. Um, I would, I'm too much, sorry for that. <laughs> Does anyone else have a question? If not, I do want to, um, get a photo of everyone together we've been taking screen grabs so i'm going to ask everyone to turn on their videos just for a second so i can um take a group shot for our archive please all right hold on up and all right say cheese <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So um, if no one has any final questions, then I just want to thank Thomas Lee for all of the amazing work that he has done uh, to create this video. It's going to live on our website, anyofutures.ca. Uh, and then this short video that we've made that will go with it with a little bit of Q&A and a lot of background on uh, how Thomas Lee got started in the industry and uh, his advice to emerging graphic designers and aspiring graphic designers and also some pro tips for those of us already working in the art world. It's been really fantastic to talk to you. Uh, Nakumi. Thanks everyone. I'm going to stop the recording. Bye.